Hi friends, Friday the 8th of January 2021. Good to be with you. Happy Friday. You made it. The weekend's right around the corner. Um, it's a blessed gift for me to continue to be with you during these video devotionals. I hope you're also being blessed by our time together. I've heard from many of you and it's just so cool that uh, well, first, that we're all studying the, the same thing in Scripture and, and orienting ourselves in, the, in, the, in unity in the one person that is Jesus Christ. And second, it's just good to be together. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's virtual, I get it, and so do you, but we're still together nonetheless. This is, I'm sure Jesus' promise uh, covers our time together. As Jesus said, uh, we're two or more are gathered in my name. I am there in your midst. And so let's just proclaim it. We gather in the name of Jesus and we welcome you, Jesus, into our midst. We're talking about Jesus as wonderful counselor. So I, I want to take a little different approach today. We're going to be in the Gospel of Luke and uh, the second chapter. It's easy for us to ascribe to Jesus more than he deserves when it comes to his divinity. Let me explain that. There are gospels out there, so-called gospels, that depict Jesus, a young Jesus, as we might expect a God to come. Remember yesterday, we, we said it's kind of silly in human wisdom uh, and understanding, or even uh, Paul called it in 1 Corinthians, foolishness, that Jesus came in humility, that Jesus came as, a, a, as a, in human form. But um, these Gospels, I believe, again, are uh, humankind's attempt to make Jesus who we think he should be, <laughs> or write the story how we think the story should go. So for instance, there's the Gospel of Thomas, and it's not canonized, it's not recognized as a true gospel. And most of that has to do with the picture of Jesus we find there, just doesn't match up with any of, um, of other uh, scriptural accounts of Jesus. But in the Gospel of Thomas, you have here uh, a Jesus that's performing miracles as a child. So uh, for, first he kills a bird. He's out playing with friends and kills a bird, which somehow that's okay, because then Jesus uh, breathes life back into this bird and it's you know, his first resurrection. This is how we would expect a God to come, right? Uh, not like Paul says in Philippians 2, that Jesus emptied himself uh, but that Jesus came with power and authority and might. And the reality is, yes, he did. But again, as Philippians 2 says, Jesus didn't count that power and authority as equality with God, but emptied himself of that. Meaning that Jesus did not act in his divine nature. Jesus acted in his human nature with divine help. And what was that help? Yep, you guessed it, the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus, and that's how Jesus can say to us, we will do greater things than the things even he did. Why? Not because we're divine and now exercise our divinity. No, because he has emptied himself of his divinity and he has worked within the power and authority and the might of the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that's available to us. So it's really easy for us to kind of skew, come up with a, uh, skew our thinking and come up with a Jesus that just doesn't match Scripture. One of the things that we have to keep in mind is that Jesus grew for 30 years and we don't hear much about him. In fact, there's only one account of Jesus between the infancy narratives and the, the public ministry of Jesus, where he begins his ministry in Galilee. And that is found in Luke chapter 2. 
and verse 41. I'm not going to read it for us. I'll, I'll just give a synopsis of the story. But this was uh, Jesus and his parents uh, traveling down to Jerusalem from Galilee for one of the great feasts. It, it might have been Passover. It might have been some other feast that, that they were celebrating. But they find themselves, um, oh, it, it says right here, it, it says they went to the festival of the Passover. And so uh, this, is, this is that feast. And uh, he was 12 years old. And then according to the custom, uh, Jesus was supposed to be at that particular festival. So his parents leave the festival, but Jesus stays, if you remember. And they get uh, far out into the desert, heading back towards uh, Nazareth up in Galilee, and they realize, hey, where's Jesus? Again, this is funny, right? <laughs> uh, Mary, uh, did you catch Jesus? Nope, didn't catch him. Joseph, that was your responsibility. I gave you one thing to do, Joseph. <laughs> you know how it could go, perhaps. But that they didn't even miss Jesus is shocking. They go back, they find Jesus, and uh, they say, where have you been? We've been anxiously searching for you. And then in verse um, uh, 49, he says, why were you searching for me? He asked, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. So even at age 12, Jesus had a unique and significant relationship with God, his father. Again, is it because he was a divine? I don't think so. I think it's, again, the power of the Holy Spirit beginning to reveal to Jesus, there's something special about you. And we have to keep this in mind. I mean, Jesus didn't pop out of the womb in that manger and proclaim, here I am, the second person of the Trinity, um, no, <laughs> Jesus would have had to develop in his understanding of who he was. And that's exactly what Luke says happened. And Luke knows, by the way, Luke's a physician. He knows human development. And so in verse 51, we come to the end of the story and the end of our uh, glimpse into the life of Jesus until he is 30 and begins his public ministry. So verse 51, Luke 2, uh, then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. Oh, by the way, uh, we say up and down typically um, geographically when something is south or north. When it's south of us, we say down. When it's north of us, we say up. But sometimes in scripture that... Uh, that's not how they understand geography. The way they understood geography was up in elevation, uh, altitude, and down in elevation or altitude. So because Jerusalem was literally a city on a hill, it was up, one would have to climb up to get to Jerusalem. So even though Jesus is coming south from Galilee and then going back north to Galilee from Jerusalem, we hear that Jesus went down to Nazareth, north, and he would go up to Jerusalem even though he was going south because of elevation. And the, true, the same is true about uh, the account to Bethlehem because Bethlehem was at a higher elevation than Nazareth. So when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, our scriptures record they went up to Bethlehem, even though it was south of them, even south of Jerusalem. Okay, that's free. Let's get back to our text. <laughs> verse two, uh, verse uh, 52, so Luke 2, 52. I, I've memorized this, and it's a good reminder for uh, many things. But uh, our text says, Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and in favor with man. A better translation there of that word favor is knowledge. So I memorized the verse uh, from the NASB, New American Standard Bible Version. 
Uh, Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in knowledge of God, and in knowledge of man or humankind. I think that's a better translation because what's favor? So what does that mean? It means that Jesus is developing. Jesus is developing in wisdom. Jesus is developing in knowledge. Jesus is developing in understanding. Jesus is developing in his faith. Jesus is developing in his cognitive ability. Jesus is developing in his relationships with God and with humankind. Jesus is developing emotionally. He's 12. What is he going through at this point in life? Puberty, adolescence, all of those things. Jesus is developing. And so when we think about Jesus as wonderful counselor, we have to keep in mind that Jesus grew into this. Jesus grew into his understanding of who he was. Jesus grew into his understanding of who God was. Jesus is growing in his wisdom, in his knowledge, and in his understanding of the world around him. Why is that important? Well, for many reasons, but in particular, it's important to remember that we grow too. That we don't just get there. That God is shaping and molding and developing us no matter what age we are. And we never stop developing. I even suggest to you that Jesus developed in his understanding that he was the Messiah, that, that he didn't know right away, hey, I'm going to the cross. That that also was a developing idea in Jesus. Now, by the time he entered into his public ministry, it was clear, I think, that Jesus knew the cross was his portion, that it was his cup to drink. But as a teenager, I don't think so. Uh, as a young carpenter, I don't think so either. Probably not. Again, developing ideas and development as a person. It's good news for us, right? That as we seek Christ's counsel, we too will be shaped and developed in wisdom and understanding in knowledge and that is a gift, a gift from God. Let us pray. Thanks for Friday, Lord. Thanks for Fridays, uh, days that uh, remind us that, that there's a Sabbath coming. Uh, help us to keep our Sabbath holy, Lord God, to set it apart, uh, to consider, contemplate, uh, to meditate upon you, to give you a day of, of worship, a day where we honor and glorify you and, and you alone. A day that, that we receive your rest, Christ Jesus. Thank you that you are our wonderful counselor. We pray that, that we would, as we learn more about you, uh, continue to follow more deeply in love with you. It is Jesus in your name we pray. Amen. God bless you, friends. We'll see you Sunday at 10 o'clock, either here in person or on our live stream. God bless you. Bye-bye.